What does the future hold for New York Jets defensive lineman Quinn and Williams? We talk about that and much more coming up next year on this Monday edition of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily NFL podcast here, and it is Monday, so you have me, Kevin Ostreicher, one of the many NFL experts here on our channel. We're free and available on all podcasting platforms, and you can subscribe for free, both in audio form and video form. We're here to bring you the best daily NFL coverage, so five days a week, NFL news analysis updates. We have it here for you and the biggest stories to cover it all here on the show. In today's episode of Locked On NFL, is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And I know we're kind of in the lull period. That's what I call the lull period of the off season, but OTAs do start this week and there is still plenty to talk about Quinn and Williams and the New York jets. You know, the jets off season has been pretty dominated by Aaron Rodgers, but Quinn and Williams and the jets have not yet agreed to a contract, at least at the time of this recording. So we'll talk with John Butchko of locked on jets about the future of Quinn and Williams. If he'll be on the jets, is he going to get traded? Is he going to hold out? Is he going to be on a new team? There's a lot to dive into there. Then in the second part of the show, we'll move on and talk with Chris Carter of locked on Steelers. The Steelers signing a couple of backups for Kenny Pickett. So we'll talk about the Steelers quarterback room In the second part of the show, then finally, with me being the host of Locked On Ravens, I'll take you through Lamar Jackson and whether he'll be at OTAs for the Ravens. He signed the contract, but he was not present at football school, so will he be present at OTAs? We'll talk about that in the final part of the show. So let's first get into our conversation with John Butchko of Locked On Jets. Well, Quentin Williams has been a big talking point, maybe not as big as Aaron Rodgers, but still a pretty big talking point for the New York Jets here to talk about that with me, John Butchko, the host of Locked On Jets. And John, I know it's been Aaron Rodgers Palooza over there in New York, but is that is now settled since Rodgers is now officially a member of that team. Quentin Williams is one that wants a new deal. You know, the, the Twitter controversy this week, taking out the Jets from his bio, you know, defensive tackle for blank was the big storyline. We've seen a couple of those big defensive line deals come in over the past couple of weeks. Seems Quinton Williams wants around or even to beat that number. What's the latest that you've seen, heard, and just assume on this Quinton Williams situation with New York? Well, this was something you could see coming because before the offseason began, he said that he wanted a new contract before OTAs. So you saw this time frame coming into place, and you also saw that the Jets were spending most of their offseason occupied with the aforementioned Aaron Rodgers, who... I don't think you could talk about the Jets without at least mentioning Aaron Rodgers once. So there you go. Uh, So you could see that the timing was not going to line up with what Quinn and Williams wanted. I think that this might be the time where the Jets turn to it now that now that the draft is past them, now that free agency is over, now that Rodgers is in hand. They have a few things they have to still sort out. They still are going to need to adjust Aaron Rodgers' contract because Right now, Rodgers is under a contract for about $1.1 million this year, which sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it, Kevin? The, yeah. the, the catch is that he's under contract for $107 million next year. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this year's contract is going to be higher than $1.1 million. <laughs> It's probably going to be because you shift some of that $107 million from next year up. So you still have that to work on. But it feels to me, and it's always felt to me like this was around the point where the Jets would begin to get serious about getting Quinn and Williams a new contract. And for him, he's obviously been so good for them over the course of his career. He's meant so much to that defense. I mean, do you feel like there is any holdout potential here with him? Or do you feel like he'll play regardless of whether there's a new contract before his his time frame or not? This is purely a guess. I mean, I haven't heard anything either way. I think it's very rare a player holds out in today's NFL when they want a new contract. The economics are just not favorable for it. You know, Williams would be leaving money on the table. So I, my guess is that he's going to he, be in training camp. I think what, what will happen is he'll he'll skip the OTAs, which begin tomorrow for the Jets, or be, I'm sorry, begin today for the Jets. He, maybe he'll show up at the mandatory minicamp, which he's required to, but, you know, maybe he'll 
not be feeling all that well. So what happens frequently in a situation like this is the player shows up and then something sore. So he decides, so he, does, he, does, he kind of sits it out. I, I would see something like that happening. I would be surprised if Quinn and Williams actually held out though. It's just, and that's only just because of how rare it is because you, you lose money by doing it. There's not a lot that's gained from it from the player's perspective. Really the one recourse, the player, I guess the two recourses the players have are one sit out the, the optional part of the off season, the OTA. So I expect they'll do that. And the second is, uh, remove any mention of your team from your social media profiles, which he's done. Yeah, I think we've seen less of the holdouts and more of the social media removals of teams or pictures or whatnot there. And that's really what has become popular in today's NFL. But, John, I feel like with Quinn and Williams, again, he's meant so much to the defense. What has he brought and what will he continue to bring to this defense as long as he's obviously with the Jets in that uniform? I, I think Robert Sala used defensive line as the most important component of a defense. And they have a lot of good players, but they only have one great player, and that's Quinn and Williams. He, he's the one guy they have on that line, despite the fact that there's a lot of talent. He's the one guy who can take over games. He did it consistently a year ago. And beyond that, he's a homegrown star. And the Jets have had a difficult time finding homegrown stars. Now, fortunately, you know things have started to look up the last couple of years when they've drafted Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson and even Brees Hall. But I think as much as anything, if you're the Jets, you want to show – the players on your team that you're going to be rewarded if you perform well. So I think that there's a component to that. And they just, I mean, look, this is a team that's trying to gear up in their minds. They think that they're a Super Bowl caliber team and you don't want this hanging over your head because even if Quinn and Williams is on the team, you don't want it to be a distraction this year. I think you want, you want all eyes to be focused on winning as many games as possible. Yeah, and, and that, I think, is a huge question. It's just how long is this saga going to continue here? So, John, in, in your estimation, and just a guess or anything, do you feel like this is going to continue into potentially next offseason? Do you think that Quinn Williams is going to be a member of the Jets here for the long term, or do you think that when it's all said and done, he will have a new team? My guess is that they'll probably work something out over the next couple of months because if you look at what he's reportedly asking for in the 25 to $30 million range, that seems like pretty fair market value for what Quinn and Williams brings to the table. It's not like he's going out there asking for quarterback money. I think if he was asking for 35 million, then, you know, it might be a different story, but my view in situations like this is the most logical outcome is always for the team to give the player, uh, give the player a new deal. So until I see something that suggests something else, uh, something that will happen to the contrary, I assume that Quinn and Williams will get a new contract. And with everything that that defense showed over the course of the 2022 season, you mentioned guys like Sauce Gardner, obviously Williams contributing to that as well. How confident are you that that defense can put up a repeat or even a better performance this year? I don't know if they'll put up a better performance and they may even regress a little bit. Historically, when you jump from the 32nd defense in the league, and that's where the Jets, the Jets were the worst defense in the league in 2021. When you jump to the top five, Typically, there's some degree of regression, but it's still going to be a good defense as long as everybody stays healthy because there's just too much talent for it to not be. Quinton Williams, even Quinton Williams is a star. Sauce Gardner is a star. They have other supplementary talent there that's very good. So, you know, I don't know if they'll be better. I think it's possible they maintain and they're, they're about the fifth best defense in the league. I would be surprised if everybody stayed healthy, though, if they fell out of the top 10. I think, you know, maybe they fall to like seventh or eighth or something like that. But I think that the components are all there for this to be a very good defense once again. Yeah, and we know health is obviously so huge. Everybody, every team by the end of the year has people banged up and people injured. But the offseason is not over yet, John. There's still opportunities for the Jets to add. Do you feel like they need to add anywhere on that defense? Or are you pretty much set with your roster there on defense for the Jets? I think in an ideal world, they'd add a guy with a lot of range who can cover the middle of the field. Maybe that's a linebacker. Maybe that's a safety. I don't know whether they actually will, though. But as I say frequently on Locked on Jets, if you tell me I can be good in two spots in today's NFL on defense, the two spots I want to be good at are, lo are defensive line and corner. And the Jets are very good in both spots. A major shout out to John for hopping on. For more on John's work, be sure to check out the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up in the second part of the show, Chris Carter of Locked On Steelers will be joining you to talk about Kenny Pickett, Mr. Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and a lot more. So a ton to dive into still on Locked On NFL. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet 
doesn't win. And for me, if you don't know, I'm a, I'm a big Denver Nuggets guy. They're one win away from the NBA Finals at this point. So can they sweep LeBron? I, I don't know how likely that is. LeBron is <laughs> one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. But if you want to bet Lakers, bet Nuggets for that Western Conference Finals game four, be sure to do it over on FanDuel. They have great promotions every day. There's, they have a safe and secure app as well, and you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet. Up to $1,000, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. We're back here, our second segment of Locked On NFL. Kevin Ostriker still here with you. We just talked with John Butchko of Locked On Jets. We're now going to be talking with Chris Carter of Locked On Steelers. Pittsburgh extending Mitch Trubisky, re-signing Mason Rudolph, but Kenny Pickett, the main guy there. So we'll talk about the Pittsburgh quarterback room now. Well, we know Kenny Pickett is the future of the Pittsburgh Steelers here. At least most believe that, but the Steelers getting a couple of backups back on the books or extended Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph here to talk about that with me is Chris Carter, the host of Locked On Steelers. And Chris, let's start with Mr. Trubisky because, again, we know Kenny Pickett. That's the guy for the Steelers now. But Trubisky is someone who started the year for Pittsburgh last year before Pickett took over for him and got a two-year extension from Pittsburgh. So he's now with the team for three years contractually. What was the, what was the Trubisky experience like for you, and, and how confident are you with him being Pickett's backup? I mean, I feel like the Steelers have every reason to be confident in him. I'd say Mitch Trubisky is one of the better backup quarterbacks you could have in the NFL. He brings a ton of experience. He knows his way. He knows his way on 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 the field. He, he he's still athletic, so he can move and buy time. Um, you know, he's not a guy you want you know for the long term. But as far as being a backup, I think this is a great situation for the Steelers. The guy knew uh, knows the team playbook. You know, he learned it last year. Um, I, I also think that. You know, one thing as a person covering the team and being around the facility, him and Mason Rudolph were both great teammates to Kenny Pickett. You know, whereas like there's natural like sour grapes that like, dang it, I thought I was going to be the guy like Mason Rudolph waited his turn from being drafted in 2018. And then, you know, you know, all the things that happened in 2019 when Ben Roethlisberger was hurt and then waiting his turn. And then the first year that Ben Roethlisberger has gone, they signed Mr. Trubisky, they draft Kenny Pickett. He's a third stringer, but you never saw him pout. You never saw him like not showing up to practice. He was there. He was helping. He was be on the sidelines, helping Kenny Pickett, helping Mr. Trubisky. And then when Mr. Trubisky lost the job, he had a reason to, he could have pouted. He could have you know, said, you know what, this is when I was promised, I'm out of here, but he didn't do that. He was rooting for Kenny Pickett. In fact, he'd often be right there as soon as Kenny Pickett came out the field and be like, hey, see, look at this, see this, see that. They are a group of, I think, professionals that the Steelers were very happy to keep around. And the question was going to be, who could they afford to keep around? Mason Rudolph wanted to just test the waters. There's no doubt about that with his situation. I think the Steelers were like, hey, man, Go see if someone can pay you, you know, some 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 real backup quarterback money because we already got our guy over here and we got our starter that we think is going to be the franchise guy for years to come. And so he went to the market. No one was was biting. So he's like, you know what? Let me go back to the organization that I know and it, I can be comfortable with and have that. Mitch Trubisky, I think, is in kind of a, a different simula- situation, but a, somewhat still somewhat similar. Um, Mitch Trubisky could probably he could have he could have waited out this year's contract and signed with someone else. But he's also a new dad. He wants to he, I'd imagine he wants to be settled down, be comfortable somewhere. And now he's with an organization that he knows he likes. They like him. Um, it's a good situation. And I think Mitch Trubisky might also be, you know, in, into kind of this the situation. They're like, you know what? This is be this is my third team. And, you know, and I'm. You know, if, if Mitch Trubisky were to hit the market again, who knows where he'd land up? He knows that he can be solid in Pittsburgh. It's a good organization, um, and he knows that he could be called upon. I think the Steelers are happy with that. And Mitch Trubisky, whereas he's – again, he's not going to go out and win you a whole bunch of games, but, like, you know, last year he was able to come – he was able to help them beat the Bengals in the in the opener. He was able to help them. He came in and helped them beat the Buccaneers. And then, uh, you know, when Kenny Pickett got hurt um, – uh, late, you know, later in the season, he did have a bad three interception game, Mitch Trubisky, that is against the Ravens, but came in, settled things down, helped them bounce back and beat the Panthers. Uh, so there were at least, I think he also did the same thing for the Saints. There were at least three or four games where he stepped in, at least did the job of a backup quarterback, because I still think the main theme of the Steelers next year is going to be playing great defense and running the football and then throwing the football based off of that balance. And, uh, you know, for Mitch Trubisky, I think that's a good place to be. Yeah, I think a couple of low-risk moves for Pittsburgh where they know the organization, they're familiar. But obviously, Chris, the organization has established that Kenny Pickett 
is their guy. And so as he enters year two, after what you saw from him during his rookie season, what are you looking for out of Kenny Pickett now in year two? I think the biggest thing for Kenny Pickett is can he put it together? You know, he doesn't need to have a pro bowl season or anything like that, but you go back and you look at the things he did last year. He had four game winning drives, uh, you know, as far as, as far as tabulated by pro football reference uh, on unofficial numbers, but you saw what he did with the saints. You saw what he did with the Colts. You saw what he did with the, with the, with the Raiders and you saw what he did with the Ravens, um, you know, four games last year where in the fourth quarter, he had to step up and put and, ha- and have a drive that either sealed the game or, or led them to a comeback win and you saw him start to really put things together uh, when it came to, when it came to how the Steelers were trying to play. And he wasn't he, he never like lit it up. He wasn't throwing throwing, you know, bombs everywhere and putting up massive numbers. But he was avoiding the big mistakes in the first half of the season. In the first four games that he played, he threw seven interceptions, two of them being three interception games against the Jets and against the Dolphins. But after the bye week, he threw two interceptions or he, he threw two interceptions um you know actually no I, th- I take that back he threw one interception after after the after their bye week um because he was able to hold it down make smart decisions and the Steelers admitted like hey like things are limited they want he's a rookie they don't want to expand him too much too fast but um I, I think this year you're hoping that TJ Watt doesn't miss two months of the season like he did last year and you're hoping that your team stays healthy Najee Harris isn't hurt in training camp and has to start the year really slow you have a better offensive line that you've invested a first round pick in Broderick Jones a really good uh free agent signing signing in Isaac Siomalo uh so now you're feeling more confident about that and now you can have a balanced offense also I think I think a thing to remember is Kenny Pickett wasn't the first team quarterback he barely worked with the first team in training camp last year so now He's had a, he's basically had a season under his belt. He's had an off season where he knows he's the number one guy. He's been doing the private workouts, working with uh, working with George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, even Mitch Trubisky as a backup going to them and all the players meeting up uh, to kind of get on the same page when they head into OTAs this week. And then eventually training camp in August, they're going to be a much more united offense and he's going to know what he has. And as a person who covered Kenny Pickett throughout his throughout three years of his college career, um, you know, I saw him grow as a player and and grow as a leader in the pit locker room he didn't post post spectacular numbers in most of his years but you saw him help other people get better I think that's what Pitt or that's what the Steelers want from him right now they want a leader who makes smart decisions avoids the big mistakes and can step up in the big moment and be there for his teammate and be a charismatic guy but still the focus of the team is TJ Watt Cam Hayward Minka Fitzpatrick Alex Heisman that defense just dom- playing dominant football winning games for you Najee Harris in this offensive line getting a run game going and then Kenny Pickett playing some play action, making the smart reads off of that and not having to throw too much. And I think that that's what they're looking at here. And I think Kenny Pickett fits the bill of playing that way, at least in his second year. Chris does great work and be sure to check out his work over at the Locked On Steelers podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'll be taking it home, talking Ravens, talking Lamar Jackson, as I'm the host of Locked On Ravens. We'll be talking about whether Lamar Jackson will show up to the Ravens OTA, so be sure to stay tuned. A lot to dive into on the show. We're back here rounding out Locked On NFL. Kevin Ostraker, your host, still here with you again. Thank you so much for being here with us today, making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day. You can subscribe for free, both in video form and in audio form, wherever you get your podcast. But let's talk Lamar Jackson. It's something I know I've done for, it feels like, forever. But now that the contract situation is resolved, Lamar is under contract now the next five years. Be a Raven, no trade clause, no tag clause. But now the debate has kind of shifted from, you know, will Lamar get his contract? What will it be to, will Lamar show up to OTAs? Now, the Ravens have done this thing. I don't think they've ever done it before. They've had two sessions of football school. They call it their football school. It's not really, it's just, you know, certain drills and things. You're not, you know, you're not going offense versus defense. It's more like offensive install, defensive install stuff. Now, Lamar Jackson was not there. He's obviously the headliner, but there were also other veterans who did not show up. And there's been a huge debate about, you know, should he have been there? Should he have, you know, is he a bad leader because of this? I don't look. Lamar Jackson did the same thing last offseason. And for me, even then, it wasn't a huge deal. I'm not pinning the Ravens Super Bowl hopes on whether Lamar Jackson shows up to football school or even shows up to OTAs. Now, there have been some reports that Lamar Jackson will be there at OTAs that start today here on Monday, May 22nd, for the Ravens. 
And we'll see if he does or not. But if he does, that's awesome. You know, my preference would be for him to be there, but I'm not going to call him a bad leader. I'm not going to going to call him, you know, him letting down the city that that's not what I'm here to say, because these guys, these are voluntary OTAs. You know, they don't they're not mandatory. If we get to training camp and Lamar is not there, then I think the concern is real. But there's no reason for him to hold out now. There's no reason for him not to be there at training camp. But look. It's also not like Lamar is just lounging around, doing nothing this offseason. There have been multiple clips surfacing. He even practiced with Nelson Aguilar down in Florida. So he's practicing with teammates down there, too. He's working. He's working hard. These veterans, you know, Odell is another one who, you know, didn't show up. Those are guys who, sure, you know, the preference would be for them to be there. I'm not going to deny that. But I'm not, I'm not frustrated. I'm not upset by this whole thing because, again, you have to take into account that these guys are working. And they are working hard to be the best players that they can be. Now, it's a little different this offseason, I think. And a lot of people are, I guess, on edge about the whole new offense thing. The Ravens bringing in Todd Munkin to be their offensive coordinator. And from going from a Greg Roman system to a Todd Munkin system, it'd be great to have Lamar have the offense there. But if, if Lamar shows up to OTAs, you're still working on that. You're working through that in these two sessions of football school, which I still believe are, are more for the younger guys. It's awesome to have veteran leadership there, but it's not a necessity to have them there. I think, you know, OTAs are more important, but again, even if Lamar doesn't show up, it's not a necessity. He is there. The Ravens aren't going to want to lose the Super Bowl because of that. They're going to have plenty of time throughout the rest of the offseason workouts, throughout training camp. If that's what it comes down to the organization's preference, I'm sure is for as many people to be there as possible. But in that event that Lamar is not there, you still get to let other guys get reps in that situation. And it's not necessarily a total, total bad thing. But if Lamar does show up, I think, you know, he, he's not any more or less of a leader either way. If he does show up, if he doesn't show up. But I think what you can say is that, look, Lamar is there and he's working with more of the team. So that maybe just one or two guys is he's being around building the camaraderie, new offensive system, new wide receivers, but you know, working with Odell, working with Zay Flowers. I'm expecting a pretty good turnout. It fe something feels right about this Ravens team. I, I can't exactly put my finger on it, but something from roster construction for the most part to I don't know, just the potential they have in general. They start working out, they start being together, building that camaraderie. I don't know. This AFC is super talented. Obviously, the North, I, I think you have to say it runs through Cincinnati, right? I mean, they won the division the past two years. Joe Burrow, that offense looks electric. And you, you can't just discount that. So I think the Ravens have to take the division back. You know, if, if a team wants to challenge them, they are challenging the Bengals. It's not the Bengals challenging someone else. But to get that early start, I think, is very important. And we'll see what happens. Again, I'm, I'm not going to be super upset and, you know, oh, so angry if Lamar Jackson doesn't show up here. But again, some reports have surfaced that said, you know, maybe he's going to show up. And if he does, awesome. If he doesn't, not, not, not a huge deal in my opinion. But the Ravens, I think, have built the offense the right way. Todd Munkin, I think, is the right person for Lamar Jackson. People wanted to see Lamar Jackson out of this Greg Roman style type of offense. We're not going to see that with him. Adding Odell, adding Zay Flowers, Bateman, Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Isaiah Likely, the offensive line is good too. Plus, after what we saw from that defense, you know, they have, they're going to be the sixth most traveled team in the NFL this year, two West Coast trips, traveling to London. It's not going to be easy for them. Again, there are going to be multiple really good quarterbacks in the AFC that just don't make it this year because they're so good. I mean, you just look across the North, we'll just go division by division. In the North, it's Joe Burrow, it's Lamar Jackson, it's guys like Kenny Pickett and Deshaun Watson. In the East, you have Josh Allen, Tua Tagovailoa, right? You know Mac Jones. I'm not. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a huge Mac Jones guy. But then Aaron Rodgers, you know, a new guy there. The AFC South, you're like uh, two two rookies, C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson. Ryan Tannehill is there. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence is kind of the crown jewel of that division. And AFC West, you have Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert there. Those two guys are the top two in that division. But it's, it's going to be tough where one, two, three stud star quarterbacks are probably not going to make the playoffs and are going to be sitting there thinking, oh my, like, wow, how did this happen? So the Ravens have to earn it. They have to work for it this year. But I, th I think if they get that work in, they'll be able to make some noise, but we'll see how it all turns out for them. But so the big storyline for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson and OTAs, Lamar Jackson always has some, some way of, of making storylines here in Baltimore.
That's all I have for you here today on Locked On NFL. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to get back here tomorrow. It's more NFL content with your Tuesday host. So be sure to stay tuned for that. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.